Gotta be 60s. Definitely, definitely, absolutely. Wouldn't be 70s just because of those kind of mufflers. But I mean, that kind of looks like the uh, Ludwig you know, the internal muffler. So, yeah. you know. So that and the, the hoops too. Look how little tiny. Oh yeah, they're really thin. But that's cool though. These are like there's there's no play in them. But cast like that. And that's the lug, the flathead. There's, there's no. It's just a regular like for a screwdriver. Yeah, no drum key needed. Screwdriver. <laughs> God, that must have been frustrating oh at God. some point, though, you know? You know it, man. I mean... And that's the head that came off of it there. That's a really old Ludwig. That's, yeah, that's a, you know, maybe the... I changed the floor pump head once in the 70s, because there's the head from that. And then this was the... I'm sure that's Premier ever... Fill the plastic. There's plastic. God. From the 60s. Yeah, it's like baked white. Isn't that was weird? It was like... A different type of plastic. It's crunchy. Oh, that's cool, Chrome. Everplay Extra Plus. Made in England. Well, and the, the tag here, which, uh, another weird thing, a tiny, tiny, tiny air hole. Which, that's really small. But Is that, that's an air hole? Yeah. That's actually, so it's a thing. It's yeah, like, you release it there when the bottom head and the top head, or else it would sound choked, you would get that basketball inside of a gymnasium, that boing, boing. Huh. And that set lets some of the air out. Are those small like that? No, they're bigger. They're usually oh, okay. so that's half unusual. an inch. I mean, Gretsch's DWs are going to be like probably half an inch. And they're usually a washer, too. Um, and that's connected. And it's tiny. I mean, that's like pencil eraser size. Serial number and made in England. But these are wild. So these lugs are held on by like a pin and a washer <laughs> and a screw. So you say keep moon plate these, beat the crap out of them. They were probably cutting down, you know, the most efficient, quickest ways to replace all of this stuff, which they probably had to do on a nightly basis. You know, like, oh, buddy, <laughs> Keith's got to go change his lugs again. That's cool. So you're saying the, the heads are actually kind of a different size than modern heads, so you have to get something over uh, Especially these old, you know, especially the ones, and I've read this, all this stuff, is the stuff, is sonar, too had their own little lug key for a while, you know, and before the drum key became the standard, you know. And um, a lot of these shells are kind of either undersized or oversized. They weren't exact. Certain drum heads fit older drums a little bit better. I knew that these, you should have got me trying to pull that thing off, man. It's yeah. like <laughs> welded to that hoop. I yes, I was watching. It's like Tommy's stomping on that drum. I must hate it. it. Which is funny because Ludwig's notoriously too old, 60s Ludwig's, the drum heads really have a time. You almost have to decide to work them on there or wax the shell to get it to kind of, because they fit really tight sometimes. Like a, some of the old drums, you know, like, well, quality control wasn't the yeah. exact. Yeah. And then his heads do fit old drums really well. Go right mm. on. You know? So, you know, I'd like a Remo coated ambassador on this, but I, it probably wouldn't have gone on if I thought. Or maybe, the, you know what? I take that back. They have their vintage series now called Vintage Emperors and Vintage Ambassadors from Remo does. Mm -hmm. And they're oversized just a little bit yeah. to compensate. So they're, kind of, they're made more like vintage kit, not a vintage right. and sound. They, and they take in consideration the fact of, you know, this, this hoop is weird too. That's, there it goes. I wonder if a coin fits in these. I was thinking about a dime or something. That would be that would be really convenient. Let's see, dime. That's because I like to take. Here's another trick. Yeah, dime fits well. Here's another trick too, and tuning a drum in, so in, in yeah. modern day, a quarter, a quarter in there. Which you want to take two and go cross by cross and go together, and you'll get more even tension. That's the trick when you're really tuning a drum. You know, across from each other, go real small increments all the way across, because then you're pulling evenly straight across. Mm. So you don't just go doing 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 around. No, I don't. I mean, I start with I I get two and from for me and my OCD. I like two matching drum keys. If one feels a little weird than the other, sure. then I feel like it's it's also kind of two of the exact same drum keys. Well, how about like the ones with the dial on it? You know, for how much force? That's <laughs> yeah, no good. Huh? 
I use these right here, and they'll be used in ever any machine. These yeah. three things on the side of my head will work better. Yeah. And tell, you know, get your tension first. I, I don't like a drum that's real long. You can bounce a quarter off of it. You know, I mean, I I like to have my drum in a certain tension. Tom's one way, snare another. So you get there first, and then you find the note that re responds with the wood in that range. I mean. I know guys used to tune their drum for the key of the song, you know, Hal Blaine, like, oh, let's take the key of the song again, okay, wait. Oh, okay, you know, they tune their drums to the key of the song in intervals. So you got, those aren't real like, tight or anything. I, you know, the, the honor of this kit, they're more of this Dan, there's kind of more jazz guys, so I'll probably tune them a little higher. Like, I, I already tuned this one up, knowing that it's going to be more of a jazz western swing kind of setting. Jazz Tom to me. I don't mean call me crazy, but I don't, you know, just strive for perfection. But it's not too far from where it needs to be, to my ears, you know. This is so weird. <laughs> yeah. Ah, well, yeah. Yeah. Put the screws to it. Trick is a small increment. It's kind of like, you know. I like cutting hair. Don't just go and chop off a foot. You know, kind of work up to the desired length. It's easier to take a little bit off and put put it back on. And when you're stretching up, it's like a guitar string. You don't want to immediately go and tighten all the shit out of all of them and then warp ahead or whatever. And it's a lot easier with the drum key. <laughs> Sometimes you'll hear some of that weird long could be coming off the bottom head. Those, you know, having those little internal mufflers is kind of cool on old drums. So I've got an old snare that has one, and I use it all the time. I get in a big live room, I crank that thing up and turn that thing into Don Henley snare drum. And mm. <laughs> like, that sounds pretty good. That sounds good. We'll call that done. Just like that. Just like that, you have. Heads be played a little bit like that. Then that would get a gig or two on it. Then it'll really sound better. Mm -hmm. Snare heads too. You know, I don't like a right out of the box get on it. Takes yeah. them a lot of stretch. Takes them a lot of seed into your drum. Sorry. Now the lower heads, they don't really wear out, do they? Bottom heads, they will stretch over time. I mean, every time you're hitting them, air is pushing that bottom one out, so it's kind of getting hit, but not. Attack, but it's getting mm -hmm. blown from the inside out, so they'll still kind of stretch. But yeah. um, you know, I if I'm playing a lot, 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 you know, getting them, I, mean, I try to change my bottom heads probably like once a year. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't change. That sounds good though, man. I like that sound a lot. Too. We get some hours. <laughs> Yeah, that ring is coming totally off the bottom head. If you were to yank this bottom heads off, you would get that real choke, just boom, 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 boom. I mean, Phil Collins is a good example of a single head player. He's always played concert toms. That's what's called when you don't have bottom heads. And Hal Blaine, that. Cool, Tom. Thanks for the explanation. Cool. Well, let's make some more next time. I have a, something cool to do. Yeah. Next, how to change shoelaces <laughs> or focus camera properly. Let's see how this turned out. <laughs>